Hello, everybody. I'm Paul Beckwith. I think most of you are aware at this stage that our climate system is completely breaking down. We're getting massive uh, climate disruption all over the planet. And in this video, I'm going to chat about some of the um, most recent severe weather events and climate disruption events that are occurring around the world. So as a matter of uh, respect for our Australian friends and New Zealand friends uh, deep uh, in the deep south, down under, I'm going to put on my uh, Australian uh, walkabout safari hat. And uh, so let's get, get right into this. So I got some new equipment so I could improve my videos. So I really appreciate it for your uh, donations to allow me to um, always increase the uh, quality and uh, quantity and uh, content in my videos. So this is my website. Um, and I recently, my last video was talking about climate change, how it disrupts the ratio of male to female babies, both from rising temperatures and also from stress to the mothers. I rely completely, I do a little bit of contract work um, and um, I do teaching when I can, uh, both climate change at the University of Ottawa as a part-time professor, sessional. Um, hopefully I'll be teaching oceanography soon. And I also uh, teach chess. I've been doing that for about a decade. But mostly I rely on um, donations from you, my audience. And this allows me to remain completely independent and give you the complete down-to-earth truth on joining the dots on the climate system, where we were in the past, you know, how we're changing now, and how we expect that we'll change in the, f in the near-term future and mid-term and longer-term future and uh, basically connecting the dots, looking at the overall picture. We're a world of specialists. We're a world of people that are only looking at a very narrow um, part of any given problem, and therefore they don't have the full understanding of the problem to, to uh, suggest solutions, etc. I like to use the chess analogy. Um, the, most scientists are pieces on the chessboard. They're looking at their own square on the chessboard. They're an individual piece with their own capabilities. Um, I I'm the chess player. Um, I love to play chess. I love to strategize and I love to, uh, you know, the tactics of the game and, and trying to improve. I was ranked um, 41st or 42nd in Canada and I'm gonna get some software to st and study my old games and, uh, you know, try to get my rating back up into that sort of level. So please consider uh, donating on my PayPal um, button here on my website. So let's get into um, basically what I do. I try to educate you, the public, on abrupt climate change. I try to let you know what's coming up in the near term, what's coming up in the uh, longer term. And I do that mostly by posting videos, usually a couple a week. Sometimes I'm very prolific. Sometimes I take a bit of a of a gap and then people notice. So if you Google, uh, just Google Paul Beck with uh, YouTube, um, you come to my video, please subscribe. It tells you when I do each video. And if you go on here, videos, um, you know, it gives you all of the videos and you can order it. So you can sort by, this is um, the newest to the oldest, the newest videos to the oldest, the date added, the oldest, and you can do most popular. So. You know, most popular, this is the unprecedented jet stream crossing the equator. We're seeing a similar thing happening now. And uh, it's, so, it's so on. It's ranking it by um, most popular. So if we do uh, date added newest, and there's a good search feature here. So let's say we want to search all my videos on Antarctica, for example. Antarctica. Okay, actually that's not, this is all Antarctica videos, but it went off my channel. Okay, so that's not what we want to do. We want to use this search feature here. So this is within my channel, 
and I do Antarctica. Antarctica. Uh, enter. Okay, and here we go. So Antarctica under abrupt climate change. It's raining in Antarctica and the Arctic. Why Santa must move to Antarctica. Abrupt melt in Greenland and Antarctica, and so on. So it does a search, and the things that have the highest um, hits, the highest um, overlap with that term Antarctica, you can get very specific search term, and you can find the videos. So what you'll... Um, what you'll see is, is um, you know, you can do a search on all of the video content to research any topics, aerosols, clouds, Greenland, Antarctica, Arctic. You know, you can have very broad search terms, very narrow search terms. You can look at methane, for example, CO2, et cetera. So I have a vast body, a vast body of videos, about 500 odd plus videos, and I'm going to be doing a lot because over Christmas I asked people that don't have donated money to me over the past year and I, and I want to thank everybody who has done that. I've asked them for suggestions on videos and I'm cataloging those, um, doing an index and uh, I'll be doing specific videos that people have, have asked me for. Okay, so uh, of course on Facebook um, I post a lot most of the time, you know, right now we have this Australian heat wave and you can go down, you can follow me, Paul Beckwith. I have my personal website and also also I have a page. So personal Facebook page is this one. And I also have a Facebook page here, which is unlimited. Anybody can sign up. And I try to, when I do a new posting, I have to endeavor to do posts in this. Sometimes I forget to post in this particular one, and I just post in the um, in the other one, the, my main page. But I'm going to try to get better at doing that. And here we go um, now for Twitter. And I'm going to talk about some of the the most important things that have been occurring um, recently in Twitter. So this is my male female video. I usually pin up a video for three or four days until the next video comes along. Um, so here we go, uh, you know, I follow loads of people, loads of people follow me, and, um, you know, everybody in North America, at least, is talking about the polar vortex. So let's just have a quick look at that. So if you Google climate reanalyzer, you can come up with temperature anomaly plots like this. And uh, so basically, these are some of the things that are in the forecast. So in the forecast, we're going to get a, it's going to be extremely cold. This is a 500 millibar, which is about halfway up the atmosphere. Um, the uh, pressure anomaly, and we've got a big low pressure here. We're going to get extremely, um, we're going to get extremely cold temperatures in this region. This is going out 174 hours. Um, when the polar vortex gets split up, you get these these areas that are um, that are very hot. These areas that are very cold. This is a, the geopotential height anomaly. So low pressure areas, high pressure areas. You get lots of movement. The jet streams are very fractured and wavy and broken up. Um, this is uh, showing the stratospheric polar vortex structure. Um, so let's just play this video here. And what you can see is it was one entity at first, and it, then it breaks up into these different sections here. Okay, so all of these different subsections. So it was more or less continuous, and now it breaks up. And when it breaks up, it gives you this type of pattern as opposed to just a constant um, pattern. You get a lot of structure in there. Okay, um, and this is showing, you know, over the last decades, the stratospheric polar vortex has become weak less stable, so therefore it breaks up. Arctic air masses can then escape towards North America and Eurasian continents. And I expect that when we have no sea ice, you know, with the new center of rotation of the, of the polar vortex uh, shifting to over Greenland, um, the, the last bastion of coldness could be actually over North America. Okay, so let's go back to Twitter. 
Um, so Australia, yeah, it's absolutely crazy in Australia. Um, in Melbourne, 44 degrees Celsius, the power has failed. So no air con conditioning, basically. Uh, let's just click on this. Okay, um, so people are sweltering power, but they, they do, they have, uh, they've had rolling blackouts, the hottest day in five years, huge levels of demand, unanticipated levels of demand. You know, it's time to change that, okay? We're going to get levels of demand like this more and more frequently, so you can't call them unanticipated anymore. This article, okay. Um, so what they need to do is shut down these power, reduce power to industry and make sure people have power on their houses so they can have air conditioning. It's a matter of survival. This is some of the temperatures here, you know, the daily temperatures of Melbourne. Um, the beaches, of course, you know, people going in, you know, cooling down. I mean, you have to be able to cool down. The, you know, if, you, if your air conditioning goes off, at least fill the bathtub with cold water. This sort of, look, this isn't me, but that sort of guy's wearing the same hat just to show you that the hat I was wearing is Australian. Okay, so we're getting tremendously warm temperatures there in Australia. Now, let's look at this plot here. Now, this is a, ta this is a good indication of baseline shift, which I've talked about before. So this is the Berkeley Earth view of global temperatures in 2018. So what they're concluding is that it's the fourth warmest year since 1850. The temperature is, by the way, the other, because of the government shutdown in the U.S., we don't have the NASA version of this and we don't have the NOAA version. Okay, but at least we have the Berkeley Earth version. Um, the temperature is um, for for 2018 was 0.77 degrees Celsius warmer than the 1951 to 1981 average. Okay, if you go back to the 1850 to 1900 average, it was 1.16 degrees Celsius warmer. Notice the difference between this, um, 0.23 plus 0 0.16, 0 0.39, about 0.4 degrees, 0 0.4 degrees. Okay, so if you see people referring to this baseline, you need to add 0 0.4 degrees roughly. Now, the pre-industrial, when people say pre-industrial, and then they use this average, you know there's a problem. So in recent reports, U.S. Climate Report, the IPCC SR 1.5 report, comparing 1.5 degree effects to 2 degree effects, you know, if you're using base like, baselines like this, they don't capture the temperature difference between 1750, which was the original definition of pre-industrial, to this time frame. And you need to add at least about point, 0 0.3 degrees Celsius to go back to 1750. So in other words, 2018 was 1.46 degrees above the 1750 average. And this is when the original two degree numbers and 1.5 degree numbers were used as being um, stop gaps that we must stay within. It was relative to 1750. So remember this, remember that. So let's have a look at this plot here. Okay, so what you can see here, now also 2018 is down here. So you'd have to add another, almost another 0.15. You know, if we're here now, you know, you need to add another 0.15, say. The difference here between here and here is 0.2. So say 0 0.15, okay? You can see that there's variation here. There's structure, et cetera. Um, you know, different volcanoes and stuff could cause dips, different El Ninos, like this was a very powerful El Nino, caused a very warm year here, right? So basically, if you... So from here to here, we'll call it 0.2. It's very close to 0.2. So let's go back to this. So we need to add 0.2 degrees here for the warmest year. So that would be 1.36. And we need to add another 0 0.3 um, to bring it back to 1750. Okay, so that's... So um, one point... So adding... 0.2 and adding 0.3 is adding 0.5, so it's 1.56, almost 1 1.6 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial. So we're there. We're already basically at that 1.5 degree guard band. Okay, there's no room. F no, this is why, I mean, we're in a global climate emergency. We have to declare an emergency and act accordingly. I'll do 